So guys, I was thinking, I woke up on Monday morning, I'm not really sure what time it was, and some noise woke me up, and I opened my eyes, and it was dark in the room, and I panicked, because I couldn't remember where I was, or what I was doing, I thought maybe I was still dreaming, and then I was panicked because I thought, oh gosh, I'm late for work, I have to go to school. I couldn't figure out what day of the week it was, and so then I sat there and I did that thing that sometimes maybe you've done where you're in bed, and then you finally reason it all through where you think, oh yeah, last thing I remember is it was Sunday night, Jonathan and I were watching TV, I was excited that I didn't have to work the next day because it was a holiday, and we were talking about what we were going to have for our big meal of the day that day, and then I went to bed. And that's the last thing I remember is getting into bed and falling asleep. So I realized today is Monday and that it's okay that I'm not at work. And I wonder, does that ever happen to you where you wake up? Maybe you've had a slumber party or you're at a hotel or even when you're at home like I was, you wake up and just for a minute, maybe it lasts a second, maybe it lasts a few minutes where you just don't know where you are. I know one time I woke up, I fell asleep at night. I came home from school and I took a nap and then I woke up and I saw that it said 745 on the clock and I thought I was really late for work and I actually went and I got in my car and I got halfway to work before I realized it was still the same day. So I don't know if that's ever happened to you, anything that major, but I bet you've had a time when you thought you were someplace else or you weren't exactly sure where you were. And then I was thinking that is actually a really important point. We should, we've been spending a lot of work on characters with our stories in Arc of a Story, but what I want to work on today is setting, because time and place really do matter. So I want you to keep following along with this lesson, and let's work on how to make sure that as an author, we're using all of our good clues and our good writing ability to make our reader understand when and where something takes place. Today I want to teach you to be sure to make sure that your readers aren't disoriented, that when your readers look up from the middle of their story, they know where they are. They understand what's happening and they understand when it's happening. They don't look at your words and say, wait, what's actually going on in this story? You want to make sure that you don't just make it a list of sentences or a list of conversations between people. It's never a good idea to just have a person and another person talking back and forth, back and forth. Let's take a look at this example from a student. It says, oh my God, Jesse, is that you, Lex? Oh my God, I haven't seen you in such a long time. I know, Jesse said, so what's up? Nothing like fifth grade, Jesse asks. It's different. Are you still in touch with Sophie, Allie, Caitlin, Becca, Jamie, and Alex? Of course, they're my best friends. So how is Hannah, Lex asked, not as annoying. You know how younger sisters are from Sam. And by the way, how is she? She's good. Shh, just like Hannah. How is Jenna? I almost forgot about her. Totally great. So what's your teacher's name? Miss Hart. She loves me. How about yours? Mr. Ask me if you have a question. Not really. What is his real name? Mr. Green. He's nice, but really kindergartenish. So when you're reading that part of this person's story, what do you think is going on? I know when I read it, it seems like a back and forth. It reminds me of a ping pong match where these two people are talking and they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's okay, but I don't really understand what the point is. I don't, they're, I know that they, maybe they knew each other from someplace else. I don't know where they are. I don't know when they are. I'm not really sure what's going on. So this student tried to go back and revise their story. And remember guys, you're supposed to be revising your story each day too. Sometimes that means that you're adding to it. But more than that, I hope you're actually going back and changing parts of your story so that they make more sense or that they've done one of the tasks that I've asked you to do for the day. Don't be afraid to delete what you have and try again. Let's look at this second example. Let's go look at the animals first, then on the sky ride, we can retrace where we were, Jessie said. Okay, her mom said. They were zooming along 70 miles an hour. 
Hannah and her mom were singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, 99 bottles of beer on the wall. When they got to 66, Jesse yelled, enough, let's play the quiet game. Whoever talks first loses. Okay, one, two, three. They stayed quiet then. Their mom said, I hear that. They have rides and games where you can win prizes. We are there. They jumped out of the car and ran for the animals. You might be saying to yourself, Miss F, those two paragraphs are totally different. And you'd be right. But this is a revision. This person who was writing the story realized that that back and forth really didn't serve any purpose. It made more sense to be having a conversation. Because actually what happened was, in the story, the whole story, there were two people sitting in the back seat of the mom's car. And they were talking. And they were asking each other about school. They hadn't seen each other in a while. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But we had no idea anything about that. In this version of the story, they're sitting in the back of the mom's car, and they're having a conversation. Then they're playing a quiet game, and then they get there. All right? So when you make revisions, you might want to think about how sometimes it means you add things, but sometimes it means you really change what you're doing. Are there parts in your story that are just people talking back and forth? If there are... That's something that you probably want to work on. Each time you reread your story, you want to look for all the goals that have become important to you and your character. How do you plan to give your character problems? How do you plan to get your character out of these problems? Where will your character be and when will your character be? It's not enough to just say, we're at the mall, and then have a conversation back and forth. You need to actually describe what's going on there. You want to make your characters feel real. You want to keep an eye on the deeper meaning of your story so that you don't leave your readers disoriented wondering what day of the week it is and whether or not they have work tomorrow, if you know what I mean. You want to make sure that all parts of your story make sense. Let your characters do things to and with each other that you'd actually predict that they do. Then let them do things that no one would ever expect. These are supposed to be real people, so you need to write them like that. Today, I want you to work on describing what things look like in the room or the town or the place where the story is happening. Okay, writers, I want to remind you where I left off in the story that I've been working on. Um, Anne had just gotten back, and she had dinner with the family, and she was catching up with her grandma, but then she was worried about her math test, so she said, I need to go find my math book and get started on the review. So I have this first draft of what I was working on, and it says, I went upstairs to study for my math test. I opened the math book, but got bored. I saw a book on the bed, so I started to read it. I accidentally fell asleep. It was almost time for the bus when I woke up. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I was revising it though, and I feel like it could be better. Because one thing that bothered me was that I start all these sentences with I. Like, and there's just I, I, I. And that to me started to seem like a list. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And I don't know about you, but those kinds of stories aren't interesting to me. So I was trying to think of ways I could make it interesting. And what I, did, what I decided was I really needed to think about the setting. And I needed for my reader to feel like they were actually in this room. In order to do that, I needed to decide what I wanted the room to be like. So I didn't make the room like my room. I don't have a room like this, but I made the room like I would want it to be if I was Anne. Anne's favorite color has to be purple because it's my favorite color and that just makes it easier for me to write about her. But you could do things that are totally different than things you like. You don't have to make the character like you. So for example, I decided that Anne's going to have a room with a bed and her room is going to be cozy and comfy. She's going to have a desk in her room and she's going to have a window in her room that uh, looks out onto the neighborhood. Those are some things that I thought about. I thought about what kind of neighborhood, and I pictured it. And I can't show you what I picture because I can't show you the picture in my head. It doesn't work that way, but I definitely pictured it. So then I started to write a different kind of um, story. I added to my story about her studying for a math test. It was starting to get late. I could hear the news blaring from the TV downstairs, so it had to be after 10 p.m because I wanted you guys to know that it was starting to get late. Um, in my other version, I don't really say that. 
My rear end was starting to get sore from sitting in my desk chair too long. I got up and took a few steps to my bed. I said a few steps to my bed because I wanted to give you an idea that the room wasn't a huge room. It's just sort of a regular sized bedroom that it takes maybe 10 steps to get from one side to the other. So that's why I said how many steps it took. But I didn't say, my bed is five feet from my desk, because I think that's weird to say that. I tossed my stuffed animals onto the floor and dropped down onto it, the bed. I guess I should probably clarify that. Drop down onto my bed. See, re writers, you should always go back, and when you notice something doesn't make sense when you read it out loud, you should fix it. Because if it doesn't make sense to you, it's definitely not going to make sense to your readers. I noticed my copy of The Giver fell to the floor. It was my favorite book, made even more special because it was a gift from Granny. I decided to take a break and start reading it again. I stretched out on my fluffy purple comforter and started reading. Beep, 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 beep. I shot out of bed wondering what was happening. Uh-oh. I see the sun coming up over the roof across the street. I can hear my dad singing as he makes breakfast. It was 7.23 a.m. I had fallen asleep. So you can see that it's more detailed than my original copy. My word choice is more interesting because I don't start all of my sentences with I. I still start a lot of them with the word I. Um, I give you an idea about what I think Anne's room looks like. Her room is sort of a smallish, regular-sized bedroom. In my head, it has carpet, in case you wonder. It's got a bed and a desk. I'm going to give her a dresser with a mirror, and it's got a small TV on it, and her desk has a laptop on it. See, these are details that maybe aren't in my story right now, but I've pictured it. She's got a window, a single window, and it's got those grids on it, like those lines like a window has, and um, it faces the backyard into like the neighborhood and she's got purple curtains that match her bedspread and her bedspread is fuzzy. She has a couple of stuffed animals on her bed but not that many because she doesn't like that many. She's getting older so she's kind of put some of them away and some of them are still out. So these are the things that I have thought about. It helps me to think about what I want her to be like and I don't have to put those details in the story right now but you can see some of them did make it into my version this time around. You can also tell that I'm giving her more problems. What problem do you notice that I just gave her? You should notice that she's supposed to be studying for her math test, but she gets bored, she gets uncomfortable at her desk, so she starts to do something else. So instead of studying, she's read her book and she's fallen asleep, and now it's morning. And the question becomes, did she study enough or did she not study enough to do well in the math test? So these are things that you can think about as you're crafting your story. Today, I want you to go back and focus on the where and the when. Are there places you can go back in your story and add details? So for example, maybe I go back to the beginning of my story, and I want to say something about where the story takes place. I say the finish line at the park. Maybe I want to take some time and remind myself that I want to go back and say something at the park. Um, so I make a little note to go back later and add details about that. And then when I go back in to type it later, I can add those. So you go back through and you think about, can you do a better job thinking about the setting? You know she lives in a house. Um, well, I guess you can kind of assume she lives in a house or an apartment that has a driveway, which some apartments do. But you know that's what she lives in because it says that she um, sees her grandma in the driveway. So you know that she has some kind of a place to live that has a driveway. Uh, so there's probably a garage, because usually where there's a driveway, there's a garage. Um, you know that she has a house. Well, I guess it says house here, so you know she has a house. Um, these are things that you know, but what other things can you add? What details? Instead of just giving a list of back and forths. So that's what I want you to think about today.